all right what is going on everyone i'm back with another video and today we are hopping into wwe 2k22's gm mode now i know gm mode in this game is very i guess basic not much into it um obviously everyone will see what's going on i've already played it before i can link down david's stream at the bottom in the description or something like that that's where you'll see me playing it outside of here me and him playing uh but besides that i'm gonna skip this because i've already gone through it eh, i guess i'll leave it on but there's no audio on so it's not like anything can be heard but yeah um i'm just gonna try to play some gm mode hopefully it gets me the content that i need and i'm probably just gonna do the draft for the first episode and the second episode i'll probably do one or two weeks maybe three per episode pay-per-views i'll leave out I'll, I'll see how i'm going to do everything but becoming a gm welcome to my gm your first big choice will be deciding which gm you will be t you will take for your brand to the next level each gm has their own unique power cards obviously uh as you can see we have adam pierce sonya deville william regal shane mcmahon and stephanie mcmahon and then I think if you just hit X on it, the power card's right there, which we can get more into the power cards later. Most likely, though, if you're seeing this, you already know how GM mode works, so I'll kind of just give up a summed up version of how everything works. So, obviously here, you got Instigator increases the level of all activity rivalries by one. That's Adam Pierce's ability. That's Sonya Deville, who raises the entire roster morale by 15. Superstar GM. William Regal has the Legend Whisper, and that's the first Legend you sign this week will be free. Which honestly, we'll get into that later. Coast to Coast GM Interference will provide a plus two show bonus and will be free to book this week. And stuff from McMahon has the McMahon presence, earn twice as much money from the arena attendance that week. Now, we could also use the Custom Superstar. I don't have one though, so we're not going to do that right now. I did say that I am doing a GM mode with David on his streams, and in that I chose Stephanie McMahon. He chose William Regal for for the sake of myself, just being a little different and trying to figure out how each ability works and stuff. We're not going to choose one of those two. We'll decide between Shane, Adam Pierce, and Sonya Deville. And basing it off the abilities, I'll probably do Sonya Deville. Having that morale by 15 will be nice, especially when everyone's trying to leave me. So that's the uh, power card. I'm going to be Sonya Deville. Choosing your brand just like your GM choice. The brand will allow you to also have a unique power card specific to that brand. Create a combination that will take your brand to the top. So as you can see, the brands you have SmackDown, Raw. Uh, NXT, sorry, and NXT UK. Uh, each one has their own ability or power cards as well. Birth of Legend, six random superstars on your roster will have their popularity increased by plus six. For SmackDown, Raw has This Is War, shocking. Three randomly selected superstars on the opposing brand cannot be booked in matches next week. Cannot be used the week before the pay-per-view. So basically... That, what that means is, like, they ban, like, say if I was SmackDown and the other team was Raw, they ban three of my opponent or three of my players, one of my superstars, this week. And by not use it the week before the pay-per-view, that means they can't use it the week before, obviously, and then ban my superstars for the pay-per-view. So that's what that does. We have Fighting Champ. The title matches booked in this week will receive a large match boost rating. Which might be the brand I go with here. International Takeover, your network deal is tripled if you gain fans this week. Otherwise, it will only be doubled. So I'm probably going to choose NXT. Uh, I know in David's, I chose SmackDown. He chose Raw. I'll probably do NXT here for me. I know I have to set up the opponents. So we're going to choose NXT for now. We have an AI. Uh, we're going to go hard, man. What? Should we give them? I'll give them. Um. I'll give him William Regal. Why not? And 
We haven't seen NXT UK, but since I'm not using it, I'm not going to give them that. Uh, we'll give them SmackDown. Um, yeah. Number of weeks. We're just going to do All Out 50. Uh, well, we'll do that. Uh, custom. No. We're going to leave all that manual. So I draft it. And then default, so I don't have to worry about the pool. So I know the draft pool is like random superstars are thrown in for you to draft. And superstars will be added during the free agencies throughout the weeks, which we can get into later. So draft rules. Each GM will start with 2,750,000. GM will take turn drafting one after the other, starting with player one. Uh, there will be eight rounds of drafting. After eight rounds, they are optional, so you can back out. And press R3 to get recommendations on who to draft. Also press square to get more information about the superstars. Mike Cole just screamed in my ear. Uh, here you can build a roster. Think about your choices. Consider the role and class of your superstar. Super, a superstar can play the role of a good guy, face, or a bad guy, which is the heel. Um, to get the best matchups, you want to pair them against each other. Uh, speaking of matchups, you also want to pair different classes with each other with the best ratings. Giants versus Cruisers, Bruisers versus Fighters, Specialist against anyone. And you'll find the goods and bads when you mix and match different classes, so make sure to take notes. Uh, a superstar star power will determine how well they will draw crowds and viewers. Even if you book bad matches, it will come pouring in if the superstar has enough star power throughout the season you can raise your superstars popularity by putting them in matches during promos doing promos or using power cards the higher the popularity the better their matches will be rated and the higher their star power will be but don't overdo it superstars get tired too Keep a close eye on their stamina. The lower it goes, the higher chance of injury. Not booking them on shows will help them recover their stamina. So looking at this, this actually looks quite like the draft me and David had where the top guy is Finn Balor and the big E. So yeah, this looks like the exact same pool we had. I guess I could have changed it a little bit. But um, I pick first. Uh, and then it's obviously SmackDown's pick after that. And I think... For mine, I think it's just a men and women's title. I don't think there's tag team. And I think I want Finn Balor being the NXT champion at least to start. So I'm going to draft Finn Balor. The GM going for the Prince. You cannot deny his passion. That's why oh, he's yeah. number one. All your draft two stars will appear over here on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It tells you the roster breakdown at the bottom to see our totals. Well, Recommendations the are right there. And SmackDown gets Biggie. I like the little uh, in detail stuff they get into with like explaining the picks, like Michael Cole and Corey Graves. Uh, next pick, I do want someone to go against Finn Balor, and he is a heel. Uh, I'm assuming there is, I believe, something to switch it. But a uh, fighter against Bruiser, I believe it was. It's perfect for our first feud. Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, easy pick. Kevin Owens brings the fight back to NXT. He's MVP. Fury. What a great pick. All right, well, MVP's picked, and I think I just need to get the best possible woman right now. And between Charlotte Flair... Bianca Belair and Asuka. Um, I think I'm going to pick Asuka. Well, I might pick Charlotte Flair because the specialist goes with anyone, I'm pretty sure. Um, though Finn Balor is going to be my starting champ as a heel, so we might as well have an eight face champ. Just kind of balance it out a bit. So we'll go. We'll try to get Asuka. The Empress expanding her empire. The GM Becky Lynch is gone. When they see one. And then after that, Asuka is a fighter. I want to get someone to pair her up with, at least to start. Shayna Baszler. And Perf Bruiser. Uh, I guess I could have got someone like towards the top, but I don't want to get the highest. The cage fighter, 
and they're gonna get Alexa. She will not let her potential go unfulfilled. So we got the fifth pick, and I do have basically my first couple feuds picked out. So I think I want to get someone just kind of get in the middle, or even, yeah, either like the middle. And I think that would be a nice spot for good old Rey Mysterio in NXT. A legend arrives in NXT in Rey Mysterio. He's an absolute ace in the air. Great pick. They get Shayna Baszler, and then I kind of want to get a giant just to have a feud with him, but I'm not going to pick like that. I think I'm going to go with Randy Orton. Maybe. I think right now we're going to go with Randy Orton, just have that on our roster. They go with Walter. What? Okay. Uh, Got to go Miz. They left him here. I'm going to try to get Morrison after. A future main event player for sure. All right, they gave up Morrison. I'll just have one tag team. Now I don't believe there's a tag team title. A new night to delight for Morrison. This guy thinks he's better than those early picks, and he's right. So I don't think there's a tag team title in this, but having tag matches it will obviously help. Now optional drafting as we pass round eight. Uh, great, basically telling you that you can get more players if you want. So it's your call to continue drafting. Uh, if you ever do want to end the draft, you hit options, and then it gives you the option to quit. I think we're going to pick up a few more people, though. And I think we should probably get another woman or two. Uh, I am going to go for the, like, the lower guys and girls down here, though. Because I do need some... Go Tony Storm. I do need some money. Lightning down under strikes NXT once again. One of the few pieces missing from this brand. They picked Ricochet during that, and I might end up actually picking up Keith Lee before I get another girl. But I might also just push it off one more round and get Keith Lee. Yeah, we're going to do that. Keith Lee, and then next round we'll get a female limitless pick by the gm a spectacle of size this guy's a great pick uh what do i have for the women i have a face a heel and a face so we should probably get a heel um let's do natalia the veteran natalia looking to bolster a new roster this woman has the ruthlessness to match her upside I'll probably pick one more, have 13. Uh, we also have like the free agents and stuff. So I'm not gonna go too high of a pick here. I might just pick like another mid card title, even though there is not one, but middle of the road area. We got seven males and four women. So I think I'm gonna go Ember Moon. Just having a good mix. And I go Bailey. Player here very soon. So yep, options, this menu pops up, so you want to confirm, you hit confirm, and then it shows your roster here. Um, I don't know if, oh yeah, I did pick up Morrison, I do remember that. Uh, yeah, and then obviously, so they finish it with Billy K and I think Buddy Murphy, and now they're very low on money compared to us but you could also get the rundown of the draft here um i'm not that intrigued to go in depth with it and we have four weeks obviously that will pop up every week and then i'll start off with the messages here and then go through every menu and then i'll probably leave it till next week maybe i'll actually even do one week just to like show everyone how it works so to start every week you'll be going through your messages a uh, conversation will lead to a promise, and you'll find those in your journal, which we'll get through. Um, but here's William Regal. All of a sudden, I plan on taking SmackDown to the top of the power rankings and staying there. Uh, I have your roster and show running capabilities to do it. 
I, I don't think NXT chance a chance. You really think you can contend with us? Yeah, yeah. Tonight's a night debut. Uh, here, you obviously want to make sure you look at the bottom so you know what to pick. I'll try not to let you down. Just kind of give her some some happen. Uh, you always start off to select your champions. Uh, each champion gives you plus, I believe, ten to the popularity. Uh, I'm gonna start out with Finn Balor, and yeah, it gives you plus ten popularity. You could always mix and match, so it's like Keith Lee, and then you have more balanced roster. I want to start with Finn Balor, though. And I'm going to get him in a feud with Kevin Owens to start off, at least. And then, women's title. I didn't really think this far ahead. I just wanted these two to be the main. I'll do Shayna Baszler as a champ, kind of even out the popularity there. Um, yeah, that works. Oh. First selections here. Welcome to GM Hub. Uh, it's beginning things will cost go up. Stay the same. Speaking of booking things, the first tab will be a house. Every non paper shoe every non paper view show will have three matches that must be booked each time you book them, you'll see it display. You can also book two promos. These are optional, but I encourage you to make use of all your superstars. So you have to book the three matches. You do not have to book the two promos. But it's always good too. Uh, you hit R1, you go to the show logistics. Uh, these are the show logistics where your GM will be finding control over the booking of everything outside of the matches. Uh, so basically, you choose the arena, you shoot, choose the crew, you choose the special effects and the advertisement. The farther ahead you go, the more you unlock. You do have to pay for some of the unlockables. So like obviously, we're starting in a high school gym uh, with uh, road crew, basic lights and effects. And local signs and flyers it's not like that in real life but you know makes sense go over here get the manager roster section so he first wants the roster superstars you can get more in depth detail about and i shouldn't mention this but you can also release them for a bit of refund contract obviously free agents are higher free agent from developmental to local talent a star is awaiting a star is awaiting to be discovered uh these superstars contracts set amount of weeks once the contract expires, you'll need to renew it if you want to keep them. And then the legends, obviously, sign some legends. One special thing to you know is that they have a unique icon for the star. No matter their popularity, they'll always give you the highest star power bonus whenever they're booked in one of your shows. Thing with the legends is, I don't really want to go too in-depth, but as you can see, some of these guys have permanent contracts next to their name there. And then you go over to here. The legends, not one of them have the permanent contracts so obviously you can't sign any legends to con permanent contracts you can re-sign them after but you can't and i did actually see some things in this one that i like uh which we'll get into later but and then like after a certain popularity like here everyone from whitney down that's kind of like the developmental thing um i don't think they're real people but they could be i'm not sure i'm not that into it uh, we go over to the power cards, you get a walk by power cards. Basically, you can buy three power cards every week. Uh, inventory's right there, that's the ones you can use. And I'm actually going to start off by buying one. Um, it's a uh, contract negotiation that's always will help you, especially with the legends and stuff. Um, maybe spending 15k on it isn't the smartest idea, but it's helpful and I think it's helpful. So, that's perfect for me. Go to the ratings, obviously there's no data there, but you have the budget and the fans weekly progression side. And then you go to the journal where it's going to tell you more and stuff. Uh, journal, this is all the, uh, I guess, promises, the, I guess, contracts will be here. I don't know how to explain it, but you want to make sure you do that. And you got the commissioner goal, which is fulfilled because they don't want me putting Rey Mysterio in a match. You want to do what the commissioner says because it gets you the power card right there. And obviously, this will save us the cost of a free special effects booking. So that saves us if it costs anything, however much it costs. So, yeah, that's our... I can go in... I'll do week one just to show you guys. So first things first, I am going to actually get Cesaro. Because I don't think I saw him in the draft. And this is a permanent purchase. And that's going to be a lot of money, and we are going to have basically nothing for this show. But I will have Cesaro permanently on my roster, which is very good. 
Um, he could clash with the fighters. Uh, I don't think there's any face fighter right now. I think they're all heels, but that's fine. It just gives us another guy, and I'm not going to sign any of the legends unless I want to go big for a show. Main event time. We'll do one-on-one. -on -one. We'll do Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens. We're going to do normal, and I'll run in. Actually, we want to do Cesaro versus Kevin Owens with a run-in of Finn Balor on Kevin Owens. Hopefully, the run-in starts a feud with Finn Balor and Kevin Owens. If you do a run-in, you cannot actually play the matches, so keep that in mind when you're doing this. But, yeah, that right there tells you that. So keep that in mind when you're doing that, but other than that, and we're actually going to put that as a start. The strategy going into this is you want the good opener, you want the good main event. You don't really need the best mid-card fight, but obviously a good one will help as we're just going to start out with a championship fight. Shayna Baszler first Asuka in the main event, um, and then the mid-card, usually just something else. I'm going to do a tag team. And seeing as I only have three women fighters, it looks like I will be doing these two against Keith Lee and Rey Mysterio. I can't use Rey Mysterio, that's right. So what we will do is actually just have Randy Orton there. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to do the commissioner goal. Uh, I'm just doing it myself because it's nice to have that like the power cards in the future if there's something easy like keep him out of a match i think i can still put him in the promo uh that just explains what the promo does yeah i can still put him in a promo so i'm gonna just do that uh, if you ever want to clear a match you hit square want to swap matches from one to the other like that it's left stick uh this is on playstation by the way so square would be x on the xbox and then the left stick in to switch the matches uh, as I look to see, we have a few people. I think what we're going to do is a self-promo for Ray. And we'll have... Cruiser Specialist. We'll have Tony Storm call out Natalia and just start a rivalry. So, that's basically the card. It's very simple, and I don't like how simple it is because I want more in GM mode. I want the mid-card titles. I want other things in it, but this is all we have right now, and I guess that's what we're going to have to work with. If an update ever comes out, I'll play the updated version, but right now, this is all we have. To confirm the show, you hit PAW options. Uh, it gives you a basic rundown of everything you choose. Uh, obviously, the show logistics, nothing's there. <coughs> Excuse me. Nothing's there. Uh, shows you the fans, the show costs. Everything, you just hit exit, confirm it, get a trophy in the top right, and here's our first show. Now, for the show, I'm most likely just going to simulate the shows, or if it's a pay-per-view, I'll watch the matches. I'm not positive I will play any of the matches, unless someone's about to jump ship or leave my company and they need a win. I'll play a match, try to get them to win it. And then if I don't get them to win, I don't, I'm just not good enough at the game there. But to start off, we're just going to simulate all the matches and mo probably watch one, maybe none. Depending on the pay-per-view, we'll see how many matches we'll watch. So starting off, Cesaro and Owens with a run-in on Balor. Kevin Owens wins. Um, and it started the rivalry I want. So here, the match ratings, the viewers, you gotta think of like all the popularity of the match types of role matchups yada 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 um start of a new rivalry that helps once it hits level four uh any rivalry of three or four will conclude at a pay-per-view match with quality bonus so you want to try to get level four and then one match at a pay-per-view that will be the highest i believe the highest possible rating for that match you could get, and it will end the rivalry. Continuing to put level 4 rivalries and matches during regular weeks like right now, that will make it sour, and 
it'll just kind of ruin the whole, not only the card or the matchup or the rating, but what you're planning on doing because it could turn real bad if it goes sour. Trust me, I know. Uh, so yeah, there's our first one. I think since I had Balor run in, it might have been a DQ win for Owens, but I'm not sure. So Tony Storm calling out uh, Natalia, and that's another rivalry started. So I have another one. Keep in mind for the pay-per-views, you get four matches on them with three promos. So regular shows, you only get three matches and two promos. But with the pay-per-view, you get one more added to each. So having these like multiple more than three feuds is not the worst idea, especially with stamina playing effect. Now this tag team match, I'm not sure what to expect. I had no plans with this. Miz and Morrison win the two star, not the worst. Then we're gonna go to Rey Mysterio self promo. We'll have it's all right. I'll probably have Randy Orton call him out next week or just a match with them. But then it's the main event, and usually I'll watch this, but I am actually on a time crunch. Um, so the main event. Of our first show is actually going to be simulated. Uh, Shayna Baszler putting her, her title along up on the line against Asuka. I really don't care who wins this because they're going to be feuding anyway. But let's see. Asuka wins the title in a three star match, which is obviously pretty good, at least for week one. And it starts the rivalry that I wanted. So basically, everything that I wanted happened this week, which is perfect. Now, when you hit continue. It brings you over to SmackDown. They simulate, well, you simulate their show. So here's their show. They have Alexa and Tamina to open. They have Call Out. It's basically the same thing. You just don't see them book it. So you hit simulate. It's actually a tables match. I didn't even see that. Alexa wins a three star opening match. That's pretty good. And a new rivalry. We go to Billy K getting called out by Becky. The promo and another rivalry started. Alright. We got a big E, their first pick. Going up against MVP. And MVP wins. Not sure if that would be my middle match, but I they're on hard difficulty, so they should know what they're doing. Now Pilly K has a self promo later on that evening. And that was really good for them, so must have worked out. And then their main event, Ricochet and Jordan Devlin versus Alexander Wolf and Walter. Jordan Devlin and Ricochet win, and they got a three star. So, yeah, they know what they were doing. They put on a good show. Uh, here's the breakdown, obviously. The expectations are pretty high there. But you know what it's saying basically they expect you to start off hot go down a bit and then finish amazing uh, post show breakdown to get more information on each individual match you can obviously do that uh, you just hit triangle on the match it goes in more debt it's kind of cool if you actually care but and it looks like Owens won regularly so it does give you the thing at the bottom right under the expectations where it says like good booking for me um, actually it says not rivalry didn't start, but it says good booking, it says rivalries, and it says injuries. So if you hover over the match, no rivalry started in this match, which I think it did with Balor and Owens anyway, but doesn't, doesn't, nothing happens there with injuries, and then Baszler, Asuka, level one, that's the rivalry that happened during there, and then nothing else happened. It says good booking there. Your opener and main event were the highlights of your show as they should be focused on raising the quality of your matches for higher results. You can always, if you want to see the other show, you don't have to. Hit R1 or RB. Same with L1 or LB. And it tells you the SmackDown stuff. So listen to me now. You see all this anyway when you're simulating. The only thing you don't see is like the expectations chart and the good booking at the bottom and then it goes more into death here I'm not reading all that but it gives you the viewership count on the left the middle is the revenue right is the side note so basically people tweeting online 
uh, fan changes right at the bottom there. As you see, we went up 70-something thousand. The budget, obviously, if you're very good at budget stuff, you already know how all that works anyway. And then this is just other things. So here, like on the left, it has show quality was a D. Match car quality was a C. Star power got us plus 12. Our rating score was an 87. Uh, uh, 150 looks like it's the best without the bonuses. So you want to try to get that promo fan bonus and advertising fan bonus got us nothing. And the new fans, we got 87,000 new fans. And then the retention rate. And then brings us our total fans right there. Obviously, the revenue got the starting cash, show cost, the arena, crowd, which gives us $7 a ticket. So that gets us $10,000. Total fans and television rate, $53,000. Add all that together, gives us gross revenue of $82,000, which gives us a profit of $74,000. I don't think I did any of that right, but it seemed right when I said it, so just go along with it. On the right, you got notes, which is basically just people tweeting. You have the random fans, obviously, like Muscle, whatever that says at the top for life. Holy crap, Finn Balor just blindsided Owens. Morrison and Miz are incredible tag team. I wonder why. Um, and then, like, Tony Storm calling out Natalia tonight and hit the target. And then you got the actual wrestlers. So, Cesaro, Kevin Owens got lucky. Things will be different next time. Cesaro got robbed. No way Kevin Owens should have won. Asuka at the bottom. So yeah, that's basically how it works. Uh, here, once you hit X, it shows you if you got the card or not for completing the commissioner goal. And it shows you on the right the show ranking and the budget that you have going into week two. And then here, it goes through the same thing for SmackDown. I won't worry about it too much since it's, um, since it's more of like an AI, but I'll definitely look into it. There's also other things that I have not gone in depth for, like the second tweet up there. Alexa put on tables match, putting her in another one. You see the ring outside with the star. That's the match specialist. So Alexa Bliss specializes in tables matches, and that's also helpful to know when you're setting her up for matches that you might want her in a tables match. Obviously, that's how the specialist works. I think that's all shows them that. And then it shows you this at the end of every week. Uh, shows you the GM, the champs. Uh, since we didn't see SmackDown champs, you can actually see that Big E and Becky Lynch are the champs for them. So that's always good to look at. And we go to Albuquerque. And that's where I'll stop it. Understanding superstar morale, obviously. I think I'll have to go through these messages so I'll do that right now. Uh, make sure you're putting superstars well against each other's styles. It's basically telling me the things I already know. And Shayna wants a rematch clause. And you basically say, no, I don't think so. Hurt her morale. Or say, I'll see to it. Meaning you'll give her the match. But you have to put her in the match. If you don't put her in the match, she'll be probably lose more morale. So I'll do that. And then the attack Louis Mass, right? And then, like, here, he wants Balor in the next three weeks. Sure thing. And then you can always see all those in the journal. So right there, uh, tag team specialist noted for John Morrison. Exclusive title match. And then Kevin Owens. And then there's obviously the goals there. Power cards are there. And that should be everything. Oh, um, obviously with the new ones coming out, you can actually get these. So the arena improves, but it costs more. As you see, booking it is 10000 Booking this one, you have to pay 7500 then pay 5000 at the end of the week for it. Got this one for 10000 And then a cameo appearance for 15000 So it costs you now forty k just running that stuff. So you want to make sure you run your money. This is the roster we have going into week two. Um, I'm not sure. I think I'm just going to leave this all. I'll probably edit parts of it, but I'll probably mostly leave this uncut. Uh, I hope to get some more of this out during the night so I can upload it during the day. I probably will upload this one specifically Friday night. 
maybe Saturday or Sunday. Uh, right now it's Friday evening while I'm recording it, so either basically tonight, tomorrow, maybe even Sunday. But I will end up getting this out soon. I'll try to get more, um, more content from them for, uh, soon. Try to actually stay consistent. I mean, that ending right there, I just botched the hell out of. And I'm probably going to leave it in because that's what I do. So, yeah, I'll get into hopefully more of this soon. And hopefully we uh, end up beating the AI on hard. I did put it on 50 weeks. Probably did not need to. Probably could have done 25 for the first one. But I'm hoping this lasts me a little bit. So, thank you for watching this Episode 1, the draft, and week 1 of GM Mode. I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, see you guys next time.